we may start sir okay and go sir a very good afternoon to one and all a very warm welcome to the last session of this fdp on recent advances in computer science and allied domains heartiest welcome to our guest and speaker dr munish chindal hope you all enjoyed the session so far we are now drawing close to the end of this fdp and let me now take this opportunity to introduce our guest and speaker today dr munish chindal dr munish chindal is the founder and ceo of hover robotics and the founding president of mentorx global he is awarded and honored with highest civilian honor karamveer chakra by united nations he is the nobleian of the year 2018 the man who followed his dream he is born and raised in ludhiana in an entrepreneurial family He studied and lived in Australia pursued MBA at University of Technology Sydney Australia and along with this he is CPA charter accountant from Australia itself he holds a PhD in robotics and artificial intelligence from USA he came back to India making it big for himself and his fellow citizens he is into suitcase living keeping keep on traveling all the time and living with the philanthropy of making others rise he is the one who launched the concept of hoverboards autobots and mobility robots in india being the pioneers of hoverboards in india with more than 300 plus awards under the hood hover robotics is the number one brand in india and featured among top 5 in the world he initiated the idea of education empower and elevate in india being the man behind hand holding of people from all walks of life he is rightly nurturing everyone in the right direction with right mentoring spirits with its global launch in 2019 mentorx already delivered 200 plus sessions across the globe and dr jindal has already touched lives of more than 1 million individuals making it one of the most inspiring initiative of the year at such a young age his life is fully loaded with achievements and awards recently he has been invited to launch business incubation center in mauritius he has also been awarded as human of the year for his welfare and philanthropy work towards mankind honored with most fashionable professional by van husen he is overall honored with 300 plus awards it is very difficult for me to name all of them he is the one who believes in making the others rise with this may i now request dr jindal to kindly take over and address the audience over to you sir thank you so much namaste everyone Welcome. Um, good afternoon here in india and for my international audience as well as an indian audience thank you mr arun agarwal for such kind words towards me indeed indeed grateful to you for such wonderful introduction and um, i'm really heartfelt gratitude for dr vishal jain for inviting me and making me part of this faculty development program by sharda university kudos to sharda university for taking this initiative during this tough times and um, for the recent advances in computer sciences and allied domains wow this is need of the hour this is what where we are getting towards and today we are going to discuss about artificial intelligence and robotics new dimension to life with a futuristic approach whenever we talk about artificial intelligence you know it's very fascinating it's very intriguing that because till now mostly artificial intelligence robotics technology it used to be a subject of hollywood movies we used we used to see so much of technology uh robotics being used in the movies even honestly how my hover robotics got inspired was from hollywood movies itself when i was young when i was in my childhood where uh, any science fiction movies used to get released i used to rush to theater to watch that movie and from there on despite being computer uh, commerce graduate i launched a startup in robotics we are the pioneers of uh, hoverboards mobility robots and autobots in india and this is what that is where our entire world is gearing towards future and now artificial intelligence is no longer a subject of hollywood movies it is happening in the real world in an artificial intelligence robotics computer sciences allied domains they are in each and every sphere of our life we might be thinking that artificial intelligence is still a futuristic domain no 
in next um, couple of hours, you are going to see that it is already existing in each and every domain. Like way back in 90s when internet came in, you know, we used to have that dial-in or push-button phones. Half of the majority of the people believed that if we have a phone at our home, a landline, we are happy. Internet is not our thing. We don't need internet. And now imagine we cannot even survive without internet for a minute. If we don't get a timely meal, one-time food, we can survive. But if the internet is down even for a minute, we get furious, we get frustrated why it's not working. And same is true for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is so wonderfully going to be embedded in our life that we won't be able to survive. And I'm talking about the near future, talking about the nearest future that is going to happen with the artificial intelligence. I'm just going to start something to pep up everything. I know each one of you is back from the lunch. So let me showcase you something. That we can At the peak of the party, the fly is Marty. Back to the future, too fast to be tardy. My lady flies Barbie, straight fixing. Never tripping on my addiction. Now we picking up steam, yeah. Got the lights on green. And then we change gears for the scene. Cause SOH is the team. And I'm reaching top speed. Throwing books like I'm Creed. Never late to the party. Better watch me cause I'm always on time. So right now on your screens, what you're seeing is a human being flying on a hoverboard. This is what we are working upon right now. Yes, each one of you flying. And this is not a concept video. This is a real life video I'm showcasing you. We, we launched hoverboards in India and they said the pandemic, social distancing, stay away from each other and see where your computer science is or like domains, artificial intelligence, robotics taking you. Each one of you individually flying and it could be possible that when next time we are in, in the real world, we are being invited to Sharda University by Dr. Vishal Jain, that we each one of us land their flying on our hoverboards. That is the nearest possibility, nearest future going to happen for each one of you. Oh, so beautifully robotics, AI is the real, it's real, it exists in reality. It's no longer concept, it's no longer future, it is today. It, artificial intelligence is helping us big time towards personality development. Just with our eye movement, just with our retina scan, artificial intelligence can let us know what kind of personality we hold, what kind of human being we are, what kind of characteristics we possess, what kind of passions, if we pursue in life, could make us successful. Imagine I'm talking just with your one eye scan or eye movement. On your screen, you're seeing a kid and robotic doing the same action. You might be feeling the kid is copying the robot. The, the child is doing as the robot is doing, but it's the other way around. The robot is mimicking child's action. Yes, with the gesture movements, with whatever we think, Whatever we feel, we can make these robots do whatever we want. This is real. And artificial intelligence can read our body reflexes. Just imagine installing one app in your phone, putting the phone in your room, and you move, you get up from your bed, or you're doing some exercise, or you are dancing. Artificial intelligence, measuring all your body reflexes, and letting you know what, what areas in your body are strong enough, what areas in your body are weak, or what areas in your body needs improvement. Imagine, it can even let you know about your future ailments. And in advance, you can work upon them. We will not fall sick. We will have preventive measures rather than curative measures. Oh, people love these days, people love clicking selfies. Selfies here, selfies there, selfies. What if I let you know that just by clicking a selfie, AI can accurately determine your personality traits. Isn't that interesting? And there's a wonderful career for someone who loves clicking uh, selfies. He can make a wonderful career in the future just by clicking selfies. And even now uh, the larger organizations, they are using the AI to determine where would be, where that person would be a right fit in their organization. Yes, just by just by clicking selfies alone. 
AI is changing world big time, making things easier for us. It is never about, you know, human beings versus robots, human beings against technology or human beings against robots. It is human beings working hand in hand with the technology, human beings working hand in hand with the robotics. There are more than 52 million opportunities waiting in this domain. Yes, you heard it right, 52 million opportunities waiting in the domain of AI and robotics. All we need to do is prioritize our own development. We need to learn to learn, unlearn to learn, continuously learn. We have to uh, prioritize our own development and kudos to Sharda University today. See, they have done so such a wonderful faculty development program to our own development so that we make smart machines that be able to develop smarter machines. AI is creating a paradigm shift for the influencers, marketers, corporates, organizations. Now, when you go to social media through AI, you can better judge what people want or how you can influence the social media through the, there are such, so many analytical tools available that you can just devise who are your demographics, your geographies, the target audience, the people, and you can accurately target, have a target market for your product or for your services. This is IBM Watson. I got a chance to come across IBM early this year. And this is such a wonderful engine that can visualize your personality data and that can accurately let you know about who you are, what kind of human being you are. You know, we are entering a new world of mind, matter, computer intelligence, whereby this one IBM Watson can let, let us know what kind of human being we are, whether we are practical, we are loving, we are modest, we believe in sympathy, we are disciplined, how much openness we have what kind of values we possess, what kind of uh, domain we would uh, work in and we would love to work in, what kind of organization we would be better fit into. So imagine just by uh, interacting with Watson, we can plan whole of our life and we can be a better human being. This is a, uh, the sheet, like one of the personality data sheet that came along that what kind of extroversion, agreeableness, emotional range, needs, values we possess by communicating with IBM Watson. The technology is literally taking a paradigm shift towards the future. This is totally changing how we think, how we feel, how we perceive the world, and it is making our lives better. So when we talk about AI, when we talk about robotics, it is really intriguing. But what exactly it is? It is a form of an intelligence, or it is a technology, or it is a study. Altogether, it is everything put together. And this is what we need to study. Here, you're quickly going to see the perspectives of world leaders. What do they feel about artificial intelligence? How artificial intelligence is changing our life? Right now on screen is Mr. Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, we all know. And he says, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, IBM, whosoever, the big companies, through artificial intelligence, and they can change the world. Anything and everything is possible through AI, through robotics, and that is true. Artificial intelligence, what do we need to do with it? What exactly it is? We humans, we are naturally intelligent. We are capable of doing things even beyond our imagination. We imagine, we think big, we make it happen. But what exactly is artificial intelligence? It is like solving something, solving a problem, solving an intelligence. Okay, that's fine. We solve intelligence. What to do with that? Use it to solve everything else. In our day-to-day -day life, we really, really want better lives. We face problems. We want a solution towards those problems. So artificial intelligence is like creating smart systems. Why? Those smart systems creating smarter systems towards better human life. And that is what you're going to see live. On your screens right now, you're seeing BMW manufacturing unit. They here I'm going to showcase how cars are being made by the robots. Earlier, what was happening? Cars used to be made by humans on an assembly line. They used to pick up a body shell, install engine by themselves, the entire wiring, the seats, transmission, steering rack, everything they used to install. But now, what has happened through artificial intelligence? You can see on your screen, engineers are clicking the pictures of the cars from various angles. They're feeding it into the system assigning it algorithms so that computers, robots, they can identify what exactly car is. 
they are putting up the brand logo and the series of the car, the model number. The engineer right now is installing the model number on the car body shell so that robots and artificial intelligence systems, they can recognize which series of car this is, which model is it. And then this shell moves on to assembly line, whereby KUKA robots from Japan, they are assembling the entire car right from the engine, the transmission, the steering deck, the seats, seat belts, wiring, headlights, even the paint. Right now, you, you can see uh, a camera is scanning the, uh, you know, the thickness of the paint. Our human eye nakedly cannot measure what kind of thickness it is. BMW has a standard of seven layers of paint. So these systems are so smart, they can even measure how many layers of paint has been deployed on the body shell. And if there are any deviations through their neural networks, they can communicate with each other. We human beings, we have our brains with which we think and we work. Same way, artificial intelligence systems, they have their own neural network. The layers and layers of data whereby they judge, they mimic, they think, they perceive, and they communicate with each other. And the entire whole car is being made by these systems whereby they are even capable of keeping the inventory count as well. That what kind of inventory they have used, how much inventory is left in the warehouse, how much, and they are even able to order future inventories. Real world into the manufacturing line, smart machines producing smarter machines, artificial intelligence and robotics helping big time. So when we're talking about artificial intelligence, robotics, I've been showcasing you industry use cases. And you might be wondering, how about it is linked to education? If we are going to educate people about it, only then it is happening, like the Sharda University taking this initiative, making it happening for all of us. It is the need of the hour. We need to build a platform to engage the educators, one single platform where, you know, educators, academicians, teachers, professors, AI developers, trainers, coaches, mentors come together to specifically design education and training into artificial intelligence, the way Sharda University is doing right now. We need all of them working hand in hand towards the betterment of life and creating more opportunities. And what else we need to do? We need to spread the awareness that when we educate people about AI so that this artificial intelligence technology is deployed successfully, ethically, and knowledgeably. When we're talking about successful, knowledgeable use, ethical is the most important part. So that whenever we are deploying technology, it is deployed ethically. Ethically is doing the right thing when no one is watching. When no one is watching, keeping ourselves safe, keeping others safe, cyber security is the another domain link to it. And we have to understand human intelligence. Yes, that is the most important part. We have to prioritize our own development. Why? Because we can only make smarter machines, we can only create artificial intelligence, we can only make technology happen if we prioritize our development. How many of you agree to this? Chat window is open. I would love to read your answers in the chat. Let's participate. Let's keep it more interactive. You know, I, I would really love it if you if you interact with me, if you're replying to me. How many of you agree that we have to prioritize the development of human beings? I believe, I'm an ardent follower of this, that only if we develop ourselves, we keep on learning, we keep on continually learn, only then we'll be able to create a smarter world, smarter machines, only then the technology can progress. So, this is what we need to do. Why we need to do this? So that we can make this artificial intelligence reach the levels of social intelligence and metacognitive intelligence. As of now, only human beings are capable of this. So we have to work hand in hand with technology and make technology work hand in hand with us and tackle educational intelligence. That's the most important part. Big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, internet of things, cloud computing, cloud service, cybersecurity, crypto, blockchain, augmented reality, virtual reality, nanotechnology, biotechnology, quantum mechanics, all this took together forms the universe of artificial intelligence and robotics technology. So we need to prioritize. Yes, Archana Ma'am is saying we need to prioritize. Yes, we really need to prioritize this. So thank you, Sharda University, for giving us this opportunity towards the betterment of human race. So what does artificial intelligence curriculum includes? Artificial intelligence is a whole universe in it altogether. What it includes is machine learning. We humans, we learn from our books, we learn from academics, we learn from people around us, we learn from internet. 
but when technologies they learn from their own environment when they are fed with data and they keep on learning to deliver better outcomes imagine artificially intelligent engines they are delivering better outcomes continually learning from their environment continually learning from the results they deliver and improving on their own results and there could be uh, deep learning supervised learning unsupervised learning when a human being is in the loop it's a supervised learning that there are artificial intelligence systems in place and human beings are learning from it when there are totally automated systems a human being is not required in it it's unsupervised learning deep learning that is very very much important and a vast part of the universe of artificial intelligence most of us have done phd's in life or most of us you would want to pursue phd's in your life so when we do thesis in one particular subject we are we become the specialists of that we are called the doctorates same way when any artificial intelligent engine goes into deep learning of a particular subject fed with big data too much of data and it learns from its own environment it's deep learning and then there is natural language processing we humans we talk to each other we communicate with each other that is natural language we are talking but what about systems computer systems a very wonderful example is alexa alexa is what it's just a speaker and very ordinary speaker that was used in transistors that was there in that is there in our radios or in stereo systems right we used to hear music or news on them but now suddenly we're talking to that speaker hi alexa how are you doing can you read up the news for me what's the weather can you play the song for me imagine we are talking to a computer speaker and how again it is equipped with an artificial intelligence engine what it happens when we are talking to it it extracts the content out of it that what exactly we are asking it to do then it classifies it into its own algorithm it, uh, to, and it uh, translates its own machine language it does the question answers that what we asked them what it will need to deliver it to us and accordingly it uh, delivers the desired outcomes so there are expert systems already existing in the ai environment that you are going to see throughout my presentation now and then there is vision image recognition and uh, machine vision facebook is the best example of image recognition it can recognize our face it recognizes our machines uh, uh, i mean uh, pictures machine vision is when any of the machines are equipped with a vision they can see they can move they can identify then there is speech to text text to speech uh that's a wonderful example of whatsapp certain times we are driving a text comes in we have to reply we cannot type i don't know how many of you are aware there is a wonderful feature that if you have to apply someone you cannot type you can just start talking to whatsapp and whatsapp will start typing on our behalf that is speech to text and same way speech text to speech if we cannot read then it will start uh, talking whatever it will start reading out the text for us so that's the beauty of artificial intelligent world here i'm showcasing few of the students whom i'm guiding under uh, atal innovation mission i have been appointed as mentor of change by government of india these are the students of 5th 6th or 7th grade they have developed so many innovative projects that they have won first prizes in india being honored and now they are they have been invited by russian government they are going to russia and here i'm taking another lecture in punjab agriculture university where we are bringing artificial intelligence to agriculture you seeing a tractor here modified tractor it is an artificial intelligent tractor it can move in any kind of muddy waters and the best part is it is equipped with uh, computer vision it can see what kind of crop is being sown and then accordingly what kind of nutrients are there in the soil how much more fertilizer is required or altogether whether there is fertilizer that is required or not and accordingly it can even foresee a crop a particular plant if it is infected a pesticide is required or not so now the entire field doesn't require fertilizers entire crop doesn't require pesticides only a particular crop if it is infected then it will spray the pesticides so this is how ai is changing the scenario whenever we're talking about something everything has an impact cycle same is for artificial intelligence it has its own impact cycle what what is impact cycle impact means i means identify the decision we need to identify what we want to do we need to take a decision that okay if we are devising particular kind of kind of technology we are devising particular kind of artificial engine or we are making a robot what do we want it to do 
then what what else we need we need with the m master the data we need to provide it with the data that this is what it exactly needs to do but we have tons and tons and tons of data we need to master that data for a particular case scenario and then we have to provide it a meaning giving a meaning is that what we want what we want to derive out of the data actionable recommendations we have to give it recommendation that yes we want this particular robot we want this particular engine to do this particular thing like i was talking about alexa when alexa has been recommended to deliver outcomes as per our speech but still it is limited it can only read out news it can read, tell us weather it can play songs but in the future alexa has unlimited potential when i'm talking unlimited yes it can turn on the lights it can turn off the lights it can even start our car imagine you asking alexa that alexa can you start start my car can you turn on the aircon on 22 degrees this is coming this is coming in the near future this is going to happen soon or imagine maybe you you want a shake and you are asking alexa alexa can you prepare a shake for me in the kitchen and that um, your mixer grinder connected to alexa through wifi making a shake for you this is how life is going to change and we have to communicate the insights these uh, ai systems they have their own cybernetic systems and they can communicate with each other why we need to communicate cause we ask them to deliver a particular result if the result is desirable whatever we asked still we need to communicate yes it is okay and if there are any deviations then again we need to communicate so that systems can fix itself and we have to track the outcomes so that we can better out the system this is the entire impact cycle of ai so we we've, we've been talking about artificial intelligence that we humans we are naturally intelligent systems are artificially intelligent and this is the ability of a computer system to perform a task that normally requires a human being but what good about artificial intelligence is that our humans we have a we have our limitations maybe towards lifting a weight towards doing something we have our own uh, limitations artificial intelligence can surpass those limitations it can go beyond human capabilities that is why we need these technologies and when these technologies they learn they have their own algorithms they have their own statistical models to perform and then they they become autonomous when they are fed with the machine learning environment when they are fed with the data they can perform their own their own and from their own patterns they learn what they are delivering and whatever they are delivering they feed it back to the system so that they can also improve over time imagine you doing some exercise or or doing particular project with an ai engine whatever way you are doing it that ai engine is capable of learning from your outcomes as well that okay at that particular time dr vishal did this or dr uh, arun agrawal did this or dr munish indal did this it is capable of learning and it is capable of feeding it back to the system so that if it is facing similar uh, situation it can deliver the outcomes according to us and in all this what we need to do is training the data why training the data is so important today the world is all about data 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 big data huge data data is all over data is everywhere data is collected in each and everything even if when we join this zoom session our name our age our email our phone number everything is being collected we go to a website they they say that accept a cookie for a better uh, uh, user experience trust me even if you don't accept it the user experience remains the same but why that cookie is there to trace whatever we are doing how much time we are spending on the internet what kind of websites we are browsing even our keystrokes even our eyeballs everything they are monitoring so it is too much of data but we need to train the data for a specific outcome so that is why training the data is required and in all this what we need to do is we need to keep a human being in the loop human beings are always going to be there so if any of you have a doubt or any of you is thinking that in future technology is going to replace us no technology is automatically going to do everything it doesn't require human being no human beings are always required because we are the ones who are creating this technology what only thing we need to do is we have to prioritize our development we need to continually train ourselves so that we can create better systems out there you can go back in time 20 years 30 years there were languages maybe c++ or 
And now with that advan uh, advancement of time, you might have realized there are new languages coming out and those languages, they are becoming obsolete. So what we are doing is we are updating ourselves. Why? So that we can create better systems. So this is what we have to create a human in loop by training ourselves by, by prioritizing our development. So if we would be doing that, we would be creating a better world for all of us, for the people around us. Right now on your screens, you're seeing a wonderful woman talking to us. I have muted the voice so that I can talk to you. We all are sitting at our homes. Pandemic is going on. Dr. Vishal is sitting at his home. Few of his colleagues are sitting in the university. Each one of entire my audience who are interacting to me, Mahesh ji, Anand ji, Subhash ji, Archana ma'am, uh, Prakash sir, all of you might be sitting at your respective places because pandemic is going on. And we are taking this session on Zoom. How about if I say we, that technology can teleport you? Yes, you heard it right. You, you would have heard this, uh, this terminology in movies or maybe in science fiction. How about if I say your holographic clone can be created and it can be projected in any part of the world? Or with this technology, there is a possibility that we keep sitting at our homes, we keep sipping our coffees, but still we can be together at one place. Maybe in the auditorium of Sharda University, we are sitting together and I am projected live there through this holographic technology and you seeing me on the stage and listening to me, me delivering a speech out there. Wow. And I can see a few of the people maybe from UAE, from Arabic countries. I cannot speak Arabic language, but imagine the holographic clone is even capable of speaking Arabic. Isn't that interesting that during the pandemic, you guys keep sitting at your homes, but through your holographic clone, you can be projected in Japan, in UK, in Spain, in Russia, Italy, UK, US, Canada, anywhere. And this clone is way smarter than us. It can speak any language that we want, Japanese, Spanish, German. On her hand, you are seeing a holographic clone. In next few seconds, what you're going to see is, this holographic clone is going to transform into life-size clone of hers. Life-size, yes. Your identical holographic clone, right there. You are seeing it happening on your screens. And this is again a real-life technology. This is not a concept video. Now what you're seeing on your screens? Two identical ladies, this two identical wonderful women. The women behind doesn't know how to speak Japanese. Her clone is delivering a speech in Japanese. This is technology. This is where the world is gearing to. That in future, you might be sitting somewhere else. You might be talking in another part of the world, maybe in some another different language. Our clones are going to be way smarter than us. So when we're talking about artificial intelligence, there is a whole lot of universe of artificial intelligence. How this came into existence? Industrial Revolution One happened with uh, at, uh, with uh, steam engine. Steam engine came in, mechanized production started. Oh, human human risk took a drastic change. People went berserk. They got excited. Wow, what an advancement! Steam engines, transportation started happening. Wheel came in, mechanized production came in, and then what happened? Industrial Revolution Two, electricity came in, machinery came in, mass production started. We thought, wow, we are winning the world. There couldn't be any better thing than this. Electricity, light, bulb, machines, mass production. We thought, wow, this is it. And then what happened? Industrial Revolution 3. Automation, information exchange, electronics, internet. Oh, we were flabbergasted. We were mesmerized. This we thought, wow, this was really wow, that we are capable of doing anything we want just by holding a mobile phone device. And then Industrial Revolution 4 came in. Automation, data exchange, that artificial intelligence, robotics, computer sciences, allied domains, technology. This is the present era. And yes, it won't stop in. We are already gearing towards Industrial Revolution 5. We will keep advancing. That will never stop. That is why we need to prioritize. So what happens? We human beings, we are capable of thinking. We think with our brain. What if I show you number seven right now? You will identify it as number seven. 
I might be writing number seven in a different way. Dr. Vishajan might be writing it in a totally different way. Mr. Arun Agarwal might be writing it in an entirely different way. But still, all of us will recognize it as number seven because we are naturally intelligent. There are so many different fonts in computer systems. But how about right now if I say, we showcase that number seven to a computer system. Will be it be able to recognize it as number seven? Will it be able to recognize all the different formats? Yes, cause these systems also have their own new, new neural networks. They are able to mimic our human brain. They have so many hidden layers of data that in, despite you, we showcasing them number seven in so many different formats, it will recognize it as number seven. And I'm just choosing it as one of the examples. What I'm trying to convey here is that these systems are capable of recognizing, thinking, mimicking our human brain. So you might, few of you might be feeling scared that these systems hold way too much of potential. That is why I said that we need to deploy them ethically, successfully and knowledgeably. When they are equipped with robotics, these robots are capable of doing anything and everything for us that we want. We humans might have a limited capacity of lifting up a weight. Maybe I like I can lift 30 kgs. One of you might be able to lift 50 kgs. Someone of you might be able to lift 90 kgs. These robotics, they have unlimited potential of lifting maybe 300 kgs, 500 kgs, surpassing human capabilities. Machine learning, I already explained to you that when they learn from, they're fed with the data, they learn from their own environment, they deliver the outcomes through their algorithms. Deep learning, when they become specialized into one specific field, they learn deeply from the big data, We've been talking all this, but what's the need of it? Why we are talking? Why we are talking about computer sciences, allied domains, artificial intelligence, new dimensions, robotics, to solve the problems that we face. We face problems in everyday life. And we are like, ah, oh, why doesn't someone work towards solving this problem? This is our first take. This is what we feel. And you know, any problem that we face around is the next unicorn idea. Next data con startup. People come across, they say we have the zeal to work. We really want to work big, but we are not finding idea. This is the idea. Any problem you face is the next data con idea, next unicorn idea you can work upon. So why we are using these technologies to solve the problems around, to make a better lives, to make a better world, to make a sustainable world, to have a holistic living. And cybernetics is what these systems use to communicate with each other. Like we humans, we talk to each other, same way AI systems, they talk to each other through their cybernetics, all together creating their own universe, an artificially intelligent universe, which is helping us big time. Artificial intelligence is everywhere. I can talk till tomorrow morning or maybe for next whole week if I start talking about all the use cases of artificial intelligence, but I'm going to quickly talk about image analysis. Right now I can click your pictures and what would happen if I upload them on Facebook? You will get a notification or oh, Dr. Muni Jindal has uploaded your picture. Now how we, we, uh, we are, all of us are not familiar with each other. You might be strangers to me. I might be a stranger to you, but how does F uh, Facebook knows that I have uploaded your picture? If I now click a picture of our dog, uh, Dr. Arun Agarwal, you know, Facebook, and I upload it on Facebook, it will immediately send him a notification. How? If you have ever uploaded your picture on internet, Facebook has a record of it. Yes, billions, billions of pictures, not even billion, trillions and zillions of pictures, and Facebook has an algorithm running behind it. Whenever a picture is uploaded, an artificial intelligent engine runs behind those pictures, all the algorithms. And when that algorithm matches with your pictures, it delivers your notification that your picture has been uploaded. This is image analysis. And this image analysis is going to be used now, future, in each and every way. Imagine you walking into a mall and the mall people, mall systems, automated systems welcoming you. Hi, Dr. Vishal. Hi, Dr. Arun. How are you? And you might be surprised how, and it is happening in US right now. Hi, Mr. Subhash, how Mr. Sukhwinda, how are you doing? Uh, how can we help you? So yes, it is happening. And Sukhwinder Sharma ji is saying, yes, PM Modi rallies. Yes, yes, sir. Now it is being used everywhere. All the social campaigns, uh, international campaigns, it is everywhere. 
Then comes the virtual assistant. What is virtual assistant? Right now, I'm taking this session, talking to you. You can go down to my website, www.hoverrobotics.com. And if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me there also. Now, how is it possible? How I can be at two you know, different places at the same time that I'm in Sharjah University do, delivering this session. Same time, I'm available on my website. We have a virtual assistant called TDO. We have installed this TDO. This TDO can talk to you on my behalf and can take your queries. These virtual assistants are making you available at multiple places, making life easier for you, for your clients, for your people around. Predictive analysis. Even before we take a decision, these systems, they know what we are going to do. That is what when I was talking about cookies, that a cookie, whenever we go for a browsing experience, we are browsing a portal, a website, it shows that either the two things happen. It either shows that our uh, website is using a cookie for better user experience or certain websites ask us to accept a cookie. That is to trace our users, what exactly we are typing. Yes, it can even trace our keystrokes. If our webcam is on, it can even look uh, look into our eyeballs, what exactly we are looking into the screen. You, you know, we watch TV. Now, these T systems, data sky or it, they have embedded systems that how much time we are spending on a particular channel or a particular program. That is how their TRPs are decided that, okay, the users, they have watched this program for this long. And accordingly, they are going to suggest us better programs. If you have a smart TV, you start, if you start watching comedy series, next time when you turn it on, it automatically shows you the funny or comedy series available across the globe. And you might be wondering, how does, how is the system suggesting us? Of course, they have tracked our, you, you, you know, outcome, what exactly we're doing. Take an example, uh, you might, all of you might have noticed that if you're spending, uh, you, you browse for a product, you may have closed that website, but then you open up some another site, suddenly that website has started showing you the advertisement of that site, uh, that product. You might be wondering, how does this website is showing me the advertisement of a product that I browsed on some another site? Cause of these cookies, cause of their tracking our outcomes. Imagine you want to buy a shirt for yourself, or maybe you want to buy a particular product, a shirt shows up in a red color, we just closed it. A shirt shows up in a black color, we just closed it. A shirt shows up in a blue color, we're spending a little more time on it. Then a shirt shows up in 500 rupees, we didn't pay much attention to it. A shirt show showed up in 50,000 rupees, we immediately closed it. Then shirt started showing up in the range of 1500 to 2500 and we're spending, we're browsing, we're just browsing. Now, even before you take up a decision for yourself, the system knows that we are going to buy a blue shirt in the price range of 1500 to 2500. So imagine where this world is gearing towards. Now, imagine you walking down to a mall, camera on the mall greets you. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Sukhinder Sharma. You're surprised. Oh, how do you know my name? Cause you have your picture somewhere on the internet. Image analysis knows it. The virtual assistant built into that camera is greeting you. Now, the predictive analysis already on the website where you browse the shirts, they know that you are here to do a shopping. And your demography is this, you belong to this age group, you belong to this area. This is how much you're going to spend. And you are totally surprised what is happening around you. This, this user experience is already happening in US and it is soon coming to India as well. Machine learning, I've already explained you. Natural language processing, as I told you, the example of Alexa, that how we are communicating with Alexa and how Alexa is going to drastically change our life. Not only Alexa, I'm just taking this one example, Google Home, or maybe smartwatches. We we, we be wearing smartwatches. We'll be talking to smartwatch to do everything. Book tickets, movie tickets for us, book a doctor appointment, make things for us in the kitchen, turn on the lights, drive a car for us how our smartwatch can drive our car, see you for yourself. These are self-driving cars. They are capable of driving by themselves. I was in Hong Kong a couple of years ago. I got a chance to sit in one of them. I was standing by the roadside. A car came in, its real door got opened. I sat in the rear seat of the car. As you can see, the people are sitting here in the rear seat. The car picked up the location where I wanted to go from my mobile phone through Bluetooth. Here you see there is no one in the front seat, but the car is driving by itself. What happens, the smart systems, they pick up the optimal route through Google Map. 
optimal route as in there could be two three four alternative routes there could be a construction going on in one of the routes there could be a traffic jam on the second one so these systems they might be choosing the optimal route the route chosen by them could be longer in terms of kilometers but they would be shortest in terms of time so my car dropped me by choosing the optimal route in the shortest span of time where so where i wanted to go and these they know where is the next red light camera when they have to stop they even know the school zones they even know the speed limits they know how many cars are around them they know when a pedestrian is moving they know the zebra crossings imagine these cars beforehand we we humans when we drive a car we we when we see a red light camera when then we start slowing down they beforehand they know everything they are the best way to drive this is the future and these cars already exist so in the end uh, another query i usually get are we able to drive these cars yes if you want to do it it's called manual override if you want to drive it you can you also can drive these cars it's all up to you it's like autopilot this system is in existence since ages through autopilots in the aeroplanes if i let you know when we fly whether domestically or internationally the maximum interference of the pilots in any flight is for 14 minutes 14 minutes yes you heard it right you can even google it 7 minutes during the take take off and 7 minutes during the landing the maximum interference is 14 minutes the rest of the time the entire autopilot system is managing the entire flight this is the beauty of autonomous system so ai as i was explaining you it's everywhere everywhere means in each and every domain ai is in medicine as well in sports in transportation in commuting in farming in agriculture when we talking about in medicine recently one of the bicyclist was riding in the secluded mountains abroad and he fainted he was wearing an apple watch apple watch depicted that his heart rate was slowing down it called 911 called the emergency services and this human being got saved and even 3 weeks ago same thing happened in india as well uh, there was a senior citizen he was wearing apple watch gifted to him by his son and his heart rate dropped and this apple watch informed the nearest authorities and the senior citizen's life got saved in india and this case was went viral even ceo of apple mr tim cook personally uh, interacted with the, the senior citizen in india so this is how ai is changing the world on your screens you are seeing x rays x rays of the people normal human beings and the people who had pneumonia six top radiologists were collected uh, at one spot in the world and they were shown these x rays same x rays were shown to an ai system to scan to depict the outcomes imagine who won out of it the outcome of ai system was much better than the radio six top renowned radiologists and yes mr sukhvinder sharma when you are saying that it will finally replace manpower here these ai systems are replacing the radiologists but it won't reduce the unemployment it will create more opportunities how now these radiologists will prioritize their own development they will learn to create much more smarter systems so that in future we don't even face the problem of pneumonia what would happen is now when we fall sick we go take a medicine that is called curative measures we are curing it ourselves the world is gearing towards preventive measures that we won't fall sick the systems will let us know beforehand we will take the medicines we will not fall sick our mortality rate will increase this is happening around us these are the top use cases where ai is used customer experience as already to uh, inform you that go to our website you can talk to our virtual assistant and we are enhancing customer experience that even if our entire team is sleeping we are sleeping still we have systems in place to talk to you 24 by 7 supply chain we order products we and it gets shipped to our home now we can in real time see whether mohit benival sir is saying i am not audible can someone uh, acknowledge am i audible to all of you yes you are very much audible jindal ji thank you thank you sir thank you sir mohit sir then please kindly check your system there is there might be problem in your system sir thank you so uh, i was talking about supply chain that these days when we order a product we 
we get a notification your product has been ordered your product is getting packed your product is dispatched your parcel is with the uh, logistics company your parcel is now has traveled from uh, delhi to this location your parcel is out for delivery you are going to get a parcel this time how how this is again the artificial intelligence the technology is working behind it letting us know the real time location of the parcel through gps systems through artificial intelligent engines human resource oh this is very wonderful use case earlier what used to happen was if we are applying for a job there were five six people from the management they used to interview us you know now what bigger larger organization they are doing they are putting us in ai use cases ai environment whereby they can see and depict our personality traits one what kind of human being we are second what kind of fit we would be into the organization third what department we would be best able to work into fourth how passionate we are towards working fifth are we going to be an asset or a liability to that organization sixth uh, how long we would be able to work what is what our personal career vision is oh all that has been used there so that the, the human being should be able to put to the best use fraud detection this is being used by fintech companies financial institutes banking we are applying for a loan through the use of technology beforehand they can judge whether a fraud can is going to happen in future or not knowledge creation universities colleges they are using technologies they are using ai engines they are using robotics to create the knowledge right now also we are using technology we are on a zoom platform created and this uh, fdp program created by sharda university they are have making this knowledge happen by use use of the technology isn't it wonderful research and development we all know that there is a deep research going on in technology and now technologies are helping to create more technologies more research more development predictive analysis that I already explained you that how user experiences are changing how they are notifying our uh, browsing experience and letting us know and deciding on our behalf what we are going to do real time operations management now this ai is even used in maritime today more this morning itself i was talking to institute of maritime industry in india that how artificial intelligence is helping them in using lesser fuel unmanned uh, you know un unmanned ships unmanned maritime vehicles in the water being operated from home imagine sit with the naval officer sitting at home operating a ship in the water doing real time operations or maybe doing a lifting of the containers and delivering it in the port customer service hover robotics is doing it risk management and analytics already told you through fraud detection bankings are using it customer insights of custom uh, so many organizations they are using feedback system based on technology to get the customer insights and improving their customer behaviors even our, our organization we are doing organizational behavior audits for porsche bmw mercedes um, that uh, how these organization doing and we are doing it technology based to deliver a better customer experience for these organizations pricing and promotion this is also another wonderful field imagine you walking down to a mall you maybe want to buy uh, say for for an example you you just want to buy diapers for your baby you go you pick up the pay pack of those diapers and your reactions your body language change the cameras on the roof that noted that okay you want to buy this product but you are finding pricing on a higher side now how do they know price through your eye movements through your body languages these systems are even able to predict that yes you are willing to buy it but you found the price on a higher side imagine they recognize you now through your face recognition technology because you have your picture somewhere on the internet they recognized you who you are they now know that okay it is um, ritesh divedi sir right there in the mall one second now what has happened your phone number is somewhere on the internet again now they know that this is the phone number so what they are doing is they have sent you a marketing message that if you buy this product right now you are going to get extra 500 off oh you are surprised and it could be possible i walk down the same aisle i just pick up a bag put it in my you know shopping cart buy it you know 
I won't get that uh, promotion. So now what happens when we go to a particular shop, uh, mall or particular showroom, particular store, it says 50% off. That is standard for everyone. In future, it is possible that 10 different people buying same thing from same shop at the same time, but at 10 different prices. This is again helping bigger companies big time towards strategizing their pricing and promotion. Right now on your screens, you're seeing Mindsphere. This is by Siemens. What is Siemens doing? Bigger organizations, medium organizations, small organizations who are into manufacturing line, airways, aeroplanes, railways, turbines, or any manufacturing unit you could think of, traditional manufacturing unit who are manufacturing, their manufacturing line couldn't have been streamlined. Their manufacturing line couldn't have been, uh, you know, artificial intelligence. But Siemens has developed a system, Mindsphere, that can that is backward com compatible, that can be included into the existing manufacturing line whereby these systems are capable of monitoring the entire production and assembly line, co both quality insurance and quantity assurance. And Siemens have along with developed uh, beautiful sensors, wonderful sensors that can be installed into the existing manufacturing line to automate the entire manufacturing unit. Isn't that beauty of the system? So when I, we are talking about the systems, the AI, the technology, we are currently in Industrial Revolution 4. So what is this Industrial Revolution 4? We already talked about steam, we already talked about electricity, we already talked about uh, the information exchange, but Industrial Revolution is very vast, very huge. What it is, internet of things, big data, cloud computing, cloud servers. These days already, Google is providing you facility to store unlimited photos on cloud server of Google. Why? Have you ever thought why? You know why? Cause when we are uploading on our pictures on Google, Google is recognizing us through our face recognition system. One, now you remember I told you about the computer vision. This computer vision is so capable that in our pictures, it can even identify what brand of clothing we are wearing what kind of shoes we are wearing, what kind of mobile phone we are holding, or even the back wall, what kind of books are laying there, if you're saying, or what kind of um, program is running on the TV behind you. Yes, yes, you might be now feeling surprised. Just from one picture, they are able to depict everything in that picture. What kind of plant is planted at your home? What kind of home you're residing into? Whatever is in the picture, they can identify every single thing. It is like solving those mystery chronicles. When we play that game, we have to identify each and find out everything. Systems can identify everything. So why? So now they know that, okay, you are this human being. You are standing with another four people who are your friends. You are wearing this clothing. So now they can predict what kind of brands you wear, what kind of home you are into, what kind of books you read. So accordingly, they can deliver you better outcome. This is called collecting the data. That is why they provide you free cloud server to upload as many pictures as you want. And that is again with the cloud computing. Now they are offering you cloud computing. When, when we upload uh, using cloud computing, still they are monitoring our users. What kind of uh, features we are using? What kind of tools we are using? What we are using it for specifically, whether we're using it for our stock trading, we are using it for our companies. Each and everything is being monitored there. That is why there is another domain called cybersecurity. We have to keep ourselves safe. One, we need to make sure what kind of information we are uploading on internet. These days we freely keep clicking our pictures upload. Certain we don't even take notice. We even upload our accounts online in the cloud servers. So we have to make sure what kind of information we are uploading and how safe is it is to keep ourselves safe. Even these days there is a uh, fear of identity theft. Imagine you uploading your first name, your surname, your date of birth, your place of birth, your gender, your demography, your address everywhere. And tomorrow it could be possible that you, there is an identity theft, someone else pretending as you in your banking uh, uh, institute or calling up your credit card the provider and uh, maybe doing a financial fraud with you. So guys, please make sure you are safe. You are, whatever you are uploading, it is safe. And altogether, this is forming the universe of Industrial Revolution 4, where you by we, see, we are seeing too much of technology uses, and that is why it deployed successfully, ethically, and knowledgeably. As we were discussing, AI is everywhere. AI is in sports as well. Imagine you want to play a particular sport, maybe badminton, tennis, or golf. You want to be pro at it. 
you don't know how to play it but imagine an app in your phone a camera can let you know okay how high you jumped how you twisted your wrist okay how you are holding your racket how strong your opponent is where your opponent is lacking what are your weaknesses ai systems can let you know and can make you pro i love to play golf i'm not that pro in golf but still i play it in chandigarh and delhi golf courses i know that golf course what kind of grass is there what kind of wind is blowing what kind of fairway turns but imagine if tomorrow i have to play in singapore or in us i don't know what kind of fairway is there what kind of grass blades are there yes even grass blade matters if you are playing golf the length of grass blades everything matters what kind of fairway is blowing but there are so such wonderful ai apps if you turn on the camera you put the ca- phone in front of you the phone itself will let you know that you shall twist your club at an angle of maybe 45 25 degrees and your you can par the hole you can have a birdie or you can even ace the hole so ai is helping sports persons as well to measure their movements to uh, know their opponents and to know themselves better what you're seeing on your screens right now if you can quickly type in the chat what you're seeing on the screen i was seeing so much of wonderful participation this are the ordinary you know capsules and pills that we take yes medicines thank you ritesh sir thank you uh, bharat nidhi, nidhi dharan ji this these are the ordinary medicines capsules pills tablets that we take when we fall sick how many of you are scared of injections or you were scared of injections in your childhood what if i let you know that in future you don't need injections never need injections we fall sick we get a fever we go to doctor they write us paracetamol maybe for 3 days we have a sore throat we have tonsillitis they say we have to take antibiotics for 7 days 3 times a day after every meal we have to remember or there are senior citizens who have diabetes who have high bp low bp every night they have to take their medicines they forget it certain times we are not at home to remind them so imagine a robotic pill going inside your body you never need an injection through sugar needles they are delivering the desired amount of medicine why sugar needles sugar dissolve in the skin there won't be any needle left you will never feel any pain and desired vaccine is being delivered to you or imagine this pill can stay in your body for a day for a week for a month for a year senior citizens will never ever have to remember their medicines it can timely deliver the medicine when we have to do the course of antibiotics for 7 days a week 3 times a day we have to remember to take medicine after every meal certain as we forget imagine this pill delivering timely doses automatically by remaining in our body and in future imagine ai system you remember i told you about body reflexes looking at our body reflexes letting us know that okay our knee joint might be weak one we might fall sick so it is notifying that right it is letting us know that okay what we need to do is we need to take medicine beforehand we will not even fall sick imagine the systems are gearing so advanced so advanced that we won't even fall sick we will have preventive measures mortality rates are increasing we won't be uh, we won't even have to go to hospitals or we there could be possible that the mm, diseases that don't even have a cure they won't even exist in the near future yes that is the beauty of the ai systems when we talk about people they so many people when they talk about technology certain times they get against that no te- technology is ruining the world or it is replacing humans but imagine how beautifully this technologies are converting the world into they are making our lives better they are curing the humans the diseases won't exist this is the wonderful use case of technology right on your screens you are seeing e mobility ah this is my favorite this is my favorite you know why because we are the pioneers of hoverboards in india we are the ones who launched hoverboards e mobility robots autobots why to provide a sustainable environment to our upcoming generations provide them holistic living i have lived in australia for 6 years i've done my r&d there i have been provided the green card of australia the permanent residency i have a package of 6 million i rejected everything came back to india 
so that we can do something for India, so that we innovate here, we create here, we experiment here, we disrupt here, we make technology happen here. And on this device, I'm the only sole manufacturer of this in India. We're number one in India. We are featured among top five in the world. Why these e-mobility robots? You stand on them, they move with your body reflexes. They move with your body reflexes. You just stand on them, com commute from one point to another. You don't need any petrol. You don't need any diesel. And the best part is they don't cause any pollution. Zero pollution. Isn't that interesting? No pollution. So tomorrow if I'm saying you go out, go anywhere, just stand on it, think to move, no fuel required, no pollution, no servicing, zero maintenance. And we already have it. We already have it. This exists for real. That is the beauty. I have one in my hand. If you want to see, if you can see my video along with the presentation, here is one in my hand. This is a tiny device, just seven kgs, portable one. You can take it anywhere. Do whatever you want with it. Turning it on. Bluetooth mode. The Bluetooth device and is ready to you can pair. ride it. You can see the wheel moving. You can ride it. After the presentation again, I will showcase this to you. So this is the beauty of these systems. These e-mobility robots. We have already, you know what we did? We in Ludhiana, Ludhiana, I'm, I'm put up in Ludhiana. Ludhiana is among one of the smart cities. We took the mayor of Ludhiana in confidence and we closed one of the busiest roads once in a month. Once in the, the last Sunday, that busiest road was totally shut down. People can only come walking or on hoverboards or on uh, bicycles. We placed 10, 15 hoverboards on roads so that people can clearly ride. The same road where you couldn't even walk on ordinary roads on an ordinary day, the day we closed it, you can even land an entire aeroplane on the, that road. Imagine. This road was so huge in ordinary days when you can, couldn't even walk on them because there was that was so rushy, so blocked. The day we blocked it for uh, just for motor vehicles, you could even land an aeroplane. People commuted on hoverboards. We did a pilot project with railways as well, whereby the guard of the train has to communicate with the driver of the engine. It takes seven minutes to and fro. On a hoverboard, it now only takes two and a half minutes. So at every train station, saving another extra four and a half minutes. Imagine every transition saving four and a half minutes, the journey would cut short. This is how technology is happening us in every sphere. We are coming up with a futuristic one whereby it would be even able to click your pictures, translate documents for you, deliver products for you. This is e-mobility and if any one of you want to experience, you're most welcome at Hover Robotics Experience Center. We don't charge anything. You can experience all these devices for real. You can have a first-hand experience for these. On your screen, what you're seeing is Kiva robots. Kiva, yes, these robots, they have their name Kiva and you can see a number on them. This is a unique number. Each, there are 20,000 Kivas in Amazon warehouse. 20,000, yes. Each Kiva is uniquely numbered. And even few of you were writing in the chat, I would really love to read it out. Uh, Mr. I think Sukhvinder wrote that there would be more, so unemployment would further increase. Yes, he wrote it. Now here, why I'm showcasing this, this video is the best example that unemployment is not going to increase, rather more jobs are going to create it. Why? Amazon has put up a huge warehouse whereby these um, uh, technologies, they are working hand in hand with these robots. And you will see they are so happy. They're very happy, they're smiling. You know why? They're sitting in their chairs. They're just putting few, pushing few buttons on their computer screens and these robots are working for them. This each and in every individual Kiva is capable of lifting 320 kgs and it can remember 10 million items. So what is happening? Each individual is pressing a button on their computer screen for a particular item, Kiva remembers where that particular item is. It goes down there, lifts up the entire aisle, bring it to this human being. And this human being, whatever he wants, he takes it out. And the beauty is Kiva through their its computer vision is looking at it, what product you have taken out, how many were already there in the aisle. If there were 10, you took out two. It now knows only eight are left. And they, it also knows when five would be left, it has to order future inventories. So this system is so automated, it can work on our behalf while we are sitting comfortably in the chair. And each Kiva is equipped with computer vision. They can see each other. They know where other Kivas are. They never bang into anyone. 
So this is the beauty of this system. So when you think of technology, when you think of robots replacing human beings, this is the best use case. Believe me, this is the best use case whereby human beings are working hand in hand with robots and they are happy. And when I'm talking about more opportunities created, how? So imagine if the robots are working here, 20,000 robots, only then Amazon was able to put up such a huge warehouse. When this warehouse was constructed, more opportunities were created. It still requires more human beings. Now, more transportation, more logistics are required to transport these goods. So each and every step, more and more and more and more opportunities are created for everyone. So please never ever feel or think that it is giving rise to unemployment. When I said 52 million opportunities are waiting, that is true. You can even Google it and believe me on that more and more opportunity. And if we prioritize our, our development, we would be able to work hand in hand with computers, with systems, with robotics, with artificial intelligent engines. And if you ever come up to my facility, when you will be able to experience the e-mobility robots, you will feel that how easy they have made our life is. Commuting, imagine how huge Terminal 3 of Delhi Airport is. T3 is so huge. We have to walk so much. If we deploy our e-mobility robots there, you won't even have to move. You will just, you know, just easily commute over there. Now we are even bringing a luggage, your suitcase, that will be able to follow you. So you just pack it, you never have to pull your suitcase. It will just keep following you. Smart systems, that is what is happening. AI is in farming. Now you might be thinking, we've been talking about technology, we've been talking about robots, we've been talking about e-mobility, we're talking about sports. How come suddenly we're talking about food? We are 8 billion people on earth. We're soon going to be 10 billion people. Food is also already a scarce resource. 8 billion to 10 billion people, population will increase another 25%. But any wild guess how much more food we need? We need another 60% more food. Food is already so scarce that we need another 60% food that could only be possible if we bring artificial intelligence in farming. What AI is doing in the farming? Artificial intelligence is capable of knowing the nutrients present in the soil, the moisture present in the soil, what kind of wind it would be blowing, what, how much moisture is in the wind, what kind of rainfall we are expecting, what kind of weather it would be, what crop we shall sow that we shall get the maximum yield, area, crop area per square feet, per square meter. So even before sowing a crop, these artificial intelligence systems are so smart that they can let us know everything beforehand. The nutrients in the soil, the moisture in the soil, the moisture in the wind, the rainfall, so that we shall we be able to uh, grow better food by utilizing less water. That is what is going the future. And it is already happening. People have even started tray, tray agriculture. Why I'm saying tray agriculture, uh, one of the startups in Norway, do you know what they have started? They have started growing in small tiny trays, mushrooms, bell peppers, tomatoes. And what they are doing is they grow it in the trays. They deliver their tray right to the restaurant. So it is uh, form to the restaurant directly. So this is this way we will be able to grow more food, more organic food, much better food without the use of fertilizers and pesticides. This is all together changing this scenario of farming much better world so right now you have to see what is happening on the screen this you have to type in the chat box please carefully see this is a tomato harvester i let you know this is a tomato harvester with computer vision so i'm quickly waiting please type in the chat what exactly you're seeing what is happening on the screen let's see let us let's participate now what is happening on the screen Wow, Sukhvinda ji, thank you. Thank you, Sukhvinda ji. Yes, Dr. Kamal Gulati. Thank you so much. Uh, Kamal, Dr. Kamal Gulati, you have posed a question. I will, uh, my session will end in another 15 minutes or so. Then next, uh, for next another 15, 20 minutes or half an hour, I will take question answers. Kindly put this question at that time, I will take it forward. Yes. This is a tomato harvester working. And what you know what it is doing? There are four colors of tomatoes and it is only picking up the ripened ones, the red ones. You can see green, orange, yellow, red tomatoes. 
earlier what used to happen we human beings who used to harvest they used to take an entire bunch whether it's green yellow orange or red they used to and certain times even green tomatoes used to del get deliver to our home but now these smart systems what they're doing is it is only plucking the ripened ones the red ones the rest it is letting it grow so that we can have the best fruit best vegetables delivered to us and this is the best way of farming same way canada has developed a strawberry harvester what canada did was that uh, there it wasn't able to find manpower imagine someone who was talking about unemployment and canada is not able to find manpower for harvesting so you know what it did it all together built up a strawberry harvester that harvested the entire strawberry fields for them so see somewhere we are talking about unemployment here and somewhere they are not even able to find people so they have to develop the robots to curb that problem this is robodog yes a robotic dog designed by boston dynamics this video is one month old yes just a month old this robodog has been deployed in one of the busiest parks of singapore people come here to chit chat to talk to spend their most of their times so this robodog is enforcing social distancing this robodog uh, has a power of a cop a policeman and it is able to recognize you through its com computer vision image recognition and it knows who you are and if you are not following the social distancing it issues you a fine on the spot so imagine a robot with the power of a policeman issuing you on fine on spot if you are not following social distancing and this is one of the example of social distancing in future you you might be seeing able to see a robo dog at a traffic camera like red light cameras where it, it is monitoring the traffic and it can even issue you a ticket so what why you now you might be wondering even humans can do it why do we need a robo dog for that why cause this robo dog doesn't need any food this never gets tired this doesn't need any kind of break it is solar chargeable charges itself it doesn't need any rest it doesn't need any break it can work 24 x 7 x 365 days a year and during the pandemic when we says we shall stay home this robo dog is working on our behalf in most one of them so this is one of the use case i'm showing they can be used in anywhere and everywhere so till now we are talking about human beings natural intelligent we are talking about artificial intelligent robots how about mixing them together humanoids humans they look like humans but they are robots this is sophia she is officially the citizen of uae i got a chance to meet her this year in february in indian school of business mohali she talks like us she walks like us she even wears clothes like us and she was one of the super model a show stopper recently in a fashion show imagine a robot being a show stopper in a fashion show you can ask her anything anything possible in the world she has answer to everything she can speak any possible language in the world she even smiles like us she even mimics our emotions recently japan did an expo before the pandemic there at the reception the ticket checker she was checking the tickets of everyone she was a very beautiful girl very very beautiful girl and people were just mesmerized to see her and you know she was a robot so see this is when robots being merged with human beings making them the humanoids and tomorrow it could be possible that humans walking with us they could be the robots we don't even know whether they are humans or robots this is what we are gearing towards our world is changing drastically paradigm shift is happening this is how a fully made humanoids would be there and they are capable of doing things for us imagine there could be areas where we cannot go maybe a volcanic eruption is happening or imagine a fire has happened we cannot go inside because a fire is there we have to save human lives these humanoids can go in there and save those lives or imagine maybe during floods maybe rescue operations food needs to be delivered human beings need to be saved they are the best use case over there so technology is drastically very hugely hugely helping us in this sphere and when i'm talking about technology why why you you guys might be thinking that dr jindal is too enthusiastic about technology yes i am i love technology cause this is helping us to go better yes everything has its own pros and cons everything has a negative side as well but if it is deployed ethically knowledgeably and successfully this is making our lives better 
hugely, drastically. This is very important. And believe me, it is altogether changing the world for us. And a much better world out there is waiting for us, for each one of us. And it can change, it can make our lives better. Here on screen, you are able to see my phone numbers, my emails, my websites. If ever anywhere you feel I could be of any help, I'm available to you. Why I'm sharing the screen is because Dr. Kamal Gulati just asked me to connect with him to curb the issue of population and illiteracy. And he wants me to connect with him in MIT University, Noida. Dr. Kamal, we are already, Metrix is already part of MIT. We have, uh, we've been invited to a you know, couple of programs there and we are already looking after your women's cell. We did a women um, summit over there. We are already, we have already done entrepreneurship summit there. So for whosoever I could be of any help, please. This is my personal number. My emails, websites are there and I'm open for Q and A's now. You can unmute yourself. You can put down in the chat for next 20, 30 minutes. I'm available for Q and A's. Let's, if any of you have any query, you want to discuss anything, please come forward. The participants are only allowed to write their queries in the chat section. Perfect. Yes, you can write down in the chat and I will answer yeah. them in the meanwhile. Yeah. Uh, either, yeah, either you can pick up the question or I can read it for you, sir. Sir, I'm picking up in the chat. Yeah. The Jasmine it's Hanna it's has asked me. Uh, sir, part... Please do the announcement for uh, feedback link, sir. Yeah, all the participants are also requested to submit their feedbacks by today, 6 p.m., so that we can, it will help us out in scheduling events like this in future also. And also write your name and organization very carefully because the certificate will be issued in that name and organization name only. Wonderful. Great. There's, there's, that's such a announcements over there so in the meanwhile i'm picking up all the questions and you keep on writing the questions in the meanwhile I answer these mr anand bairam has asked that his son is in ece artificial intelligence and machine learning what is the future of course in employment in india and abroad sir the future is very very bright especially in india cause why i'm saying abroad there are still so many courses available so many things are already happening india not many of the courses are available and in India, India, the innovation is happening big time now. So the future is very bright. Don't worry about it. And if you think I could be of any help, feel free to connect with me or feel free to connect with Dr. Vishal. And Dr. Vishal is working big time in this way. And then there is another question by Mahesh Nathan. Are we not overdoing the word AI and trying to introduce in all application distribution as well things need to be as they are? AI need not get there yes i truly agree mahesh sir that uh, yes uh, a uh, natural things need to be there so that we humans shouldn't you know forget our natural touch because nature is something that is teaching us everything that is why now nature is healing through this pandemic but i won't say we are overdoing we need to have these technological advancements but yes rightful rightful deployment of this technology is necessary then we have hmm, next questions is by uh, sir is there Mohit Benival sir is asking sir is there any Indian industry who totally implemented industry 4.0 technology uh, yes Mohit sir I won't say totally totally as in if you're talking about um, totally automated Totally automated processes, uh, still they require human intervention. If I can give you an example of my town, Ludhiana itself. In Ludhiana, we have Mrs. Bekta. Uh, she's a lady who started from home by making homemade chutneys. And now she's the vendor of uh, this Cadbury's, vendor of uh, uh, this Pizza Hut, Domino's, McDonald's. Whatever wet uh, spices are used by McDonald's or Pizza Hut or entire Oreo biscuits, entire chocolates of Cadbury's, they are being made by them and they have the entire automation or totally AI based uh, production lines, but human beings are still there. And same, so many of automation, uh, these car manufacturing companies are using it in India. Mobile, Xiaomi, they have uh, made their plant in uh, Hyderabad. That is also based on uh, this uh, industry 4.0. Then we have next question by Tejasvini Khanna ma'am is asking, how can AI system enhance public distribution system of food grains like wheat, rice, etc.? Ma'am, AI uh, systems, as I already told you, if 
the wire uh, that they can know our demographics our geographies our age group if the right kind of data is being fed to the system one they would know where food grains are required which population requires that food grain die hardly like uh, take an example today in urban areas food grains or any kind of food is readily available but there could be rural areas where there is a scarcity or they are not available or certain times what is happening farmers have sold out their entire produce one the demographic second what kind of food grain is required over there third it can even do the quality control over them that the rotten or spoiled food grains are not distributed fourth these systems are so capable that they can even ensure that food grains are distributed at right price point fifth imagine any natural calamity floods droughts fires and or even during the pandemic the it could be possible that certain areas are in the lockdown food grain is not available or food is not available so these ai systems are so so, so smart that they can let us know each and everything the complete picture and accordingly the governments or the private organizations can work uh, i have already taken up a query of dr kamal gulati and i'm already avail uh, i'm always available and uh, then we have query of sukhvinder sir is saying sukhvinder sharma sir is saying that he has an idea of published patient patents on this how can i know it's worth development from where i can get this help from possible commercial development wow sir see anything or everything you are thinking or want to develop it is worth developing if it is solving a problem or it it can make our lives better it is worth developing it could be possible that either in the short term or in the long run but it is worth developing how can you get a possible idea you can if you want to go for a patent you can consult ipr companies intellectual property right companies they can give you a fair bit of an idea you can even file your patent in the us why us cause if your patent is filed in the us then it is valid worldwide if you would be publishing a patent in india it would be only valid in india but if you are if you would be publishing it in us it is valid worldwide hopefully i would have answered your query and if you still have any doubts you can connect with me and uh, dr ambika is asking me about autopilot and she is asking what kind of security is provided for autopilots i mean these systems are totally secure why because when these systems are working they are working on billions of algorithms as in I, i when i talked about those auto driving cars they are picking up their data from google maps one they are they have so many sensors deployed they know when what kind of speed they have to pick up they know the speed zones they know when to brake if you have recently read last month a life of a kid a child was saved by this autopilot system there was this a volvo truck that was rushing on a high speed suddenly a kid came in the the autopilot system in that volvo truck immediately applied the emergency brakes and nothing happened to that kid so it could and and they are saying that if the human being would have been driving the truck it could have been possible that the kid would have been alive today so these systems are way 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 secure than us we have a margin of error these systems they don't have margin of error then we have a query from mr valan arasu he is asking for small business owners in india whether these are coming or to be a manufactured or rental basis yes sir technology is now coming on rental basis as well lease basis as well or time use basis or pay as you go like take an example i am from mentorx we have so many programs that you can one can utilize pay as you go that you you register for the program whatever you utilize you pay accordingly so these technologies are coming up in manufacturing and everywhere even ai techno accounting softwares are coming that you can rent out you don't have to buy them outright harsha ma'am is asking me a question sir did hoverboard have updated because in the previous year they have failed harsha ma'am i really want to clarify you that there there are a few of the chinese copies that are coming to india they are failing they catch fire or they explode the ones we are making they are made in india they are bis approved they are iso certified they are totally manufactured in india with all the safety features with the battery management system that can manage under voltage over voltage overheating 
there is an auto cut in the adapter that once they are fully charged it cut off cuts off the electricity system their auto shut feature that if even if you run the the, the device on and you are not utilizing after 10 minutes of inactivity it will shut down automatically so if you are buying an original one from hope robotics that is totally safe it depends if you are buying a chinese copy we cannot say anything about them rani ashtya ma'am is asking how can we apply ai in underwater sensors networking ma'am our ai is already already there if you know that indian company reliance who owns the largest trans ocean um, a uh, telecommunication network and that is being monitored by ai sensors underwater and there are ships maritime industry there are cargo vessels there are uh, this uh, submarines they all are using ai sensors underwater to know the depth of the oceans to know the seabed to know what is underwater what what kind of activities are happening and few of the organizations are now using ai sensors to even dip, uh, know the for oil exploration or for to know the gold mines un under sea so then tanya das ma'am is asking how can we apply in legal sector ai is already uh, there in the legal sector as well so take an example if there is a use case uh, or a client who requires legal services if that is fed to an ai system ai system one it will let you know what kind of sections are applicable second the best outcome to fight your uh, uh, your client what would be the best use case scenario ai is already there in the legal system manish tanaja sir is asking uh, what kind of uh, different types of sir ai uh, is uh, available narrow ai standard ai and wide ai so right now in these days we are on narrow ai soon we would be shifting towards standard ai narrow as in as when someone asked me uh, for an example of uh, Uh, the companies in the still revolution four in india who are totally using automated systems so as of now we are not using totally automated systems that is the narrow ai in future when there would be totally autonomous system when they will be able to take decisions out of uh, without human intervention when they will be able to take their own decision and do, deliver the outcomes that would be the wide ai then uh, bhara nid haran ji is asking if robots are becomes over smart whether will it become friend or foe ma'am or sir it depends all on us whether we want them our friends or foe or foes see the technology is developed to make our lives easier to make us reach where we cannot reach to outgrow human potential so it means we want them to be friendly but imagine now they are making robots that can shoot they are making robots that they they can go on land mines there are robots who can deploy bombs so if tomorrow we want a war and imagine people sitting at home or the higher authorities bureaucrats sitting at home fighting wars through these robots it can easily turn into force so it trust me it still all depends on us humans on our understanding and our desirability what we want out of them so then dr ambika is asking how much does patenting in us cost honestly ma'am i don't know precisely but you can google it out but it doesn't cost much it doesn't cost much that i can assure you and there are few of the uh, us bodies as well if you have an innovative idea they don't even charge you for that but then they hold certain kind of uh, power certain kind of rights in your patent then dr irana is asking me sir this technology may create more unemployment countries like india what is uh, dr irana has already explained that if we are updating ourselves if we are continuously learning then there won't be any kind of unemployment happening around why take an example more opportunities are happening but there would be more smarter opportunities if robots will be taking on to blue collar jobs there would be more white collar jobs created if we will be continuously learning continuously updating ourselves there would be more opportunities more higher paying opportunities rather it all de depends on us that whether we are willing to update ourselves or not imagine how we can correlate today if you say you don't want to use a mobile phone you will still use that push button landline how well connected you will be with the world 
how many opportunities you will land into or imagine if you are have a 5g internet on your phone and you are available on whatsapp as well linkedin as well facebook as well and you are available everywhere how many opportunities you land up there same is true for the human beings more the knowledge more the deployment we have more opportunity we will get then ritesh sir has what is the recent development with the recent opportunities in nlp and respect to indian regional languages nlp okay wonderful natural language processing so if we are talking in the context of indian regional languages most of the artificially intelligent systems and uh, this um, robots they are now getting programmed into multiple languages they are even able to speak there are robots or their systems that can even understand all the 14 available languages in india so the developments are vast their developments are huge and the systems are capable as i have showed you your holographic uh, clone that a clone alone is able to speak any language possible in the world sukhvinder sharma sir is already uh, has another query uh, i have already got a silent patent for my idea may i discuss it with you as per you sure sir feel free to discuss any time with me then harsha ma'am has a cost very high in india x take over board that is minimum 20k then they go for a bicycle which is going to get a price half or yes ma'am i agree with the uh, we, but take it this way when hoverboard came to india the very first hoverboard i still remember came to india by segway in 2006 you know what was the price the price was 5 lakh and 60000 imagine now a hoverboard in india is available for 18000 Five lakh and sixty thousand. Now eighteen thousand. We are talking. What we are talking? Not even uh, just three percent. Just at a three percent of that Manish cost. Manisha, Manisha, yes, sir. Yes, can sir. you please share your hoverboard? The pic uh, which you shared uh, uh, to me. The picture which you shared to me that you have manufactured that hoverboard in your company. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Wow, you have given me a wonderful idea. Yes, yes. For uh, the uh, yes, let me find out that presentation. and uh, i would love to share in the meanwhile wow sir vishal sir you have really presence shared. of mind presence of mind <laughs> yes yes <laughs> even i wasn't thinking on those lines but thank you for giving me this and i have wonderful presentation on that uh, that is two or three slides if i be able to find now <laughs> Usually I keep at one because they were in my system. Today I'm using a different system. Mm -hmm. So that presentation. Mm. Just give me a second, Vishal sir. Ji ji. So nice of you, sir. Sure, sir. Take your time. I'm willing to take up all your queries. now people have started writing the appreciation messages sir it was the session was excellent very informative with excellent knowledge of the speaker i'm really glad if they liked my session really glad on that the part just give me a second sir विशाल सर सर को परमिशन दे देना अनम्यूट की ना अच्छा सर ने म्यूट कर दिया हम्म सर वी मस्ट बी लुकिंग फॉर दैट पीपीटी मैंने उन्हें काम पे भेज दिया बेकार में नहीं सर नहीं मेरे उनके बहुत अच्छे डिवाइसेस है आई एम बैक सर ही शोड इट अर्लियर आल्सो बट नॉट ऑन पीपीटी इट वाज द रियल डिवाइस ही डिस्प्लेड टू रियल वन एज़ वेल बट क्विकली वांट टू शोकेस यू अ क्विक 1 मिनट वीडियो 30 सेकंड वीडियो एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू शोकेस यू अ रियल डिवाइस एज़ वेल रियल डिवाइस इज राइट इन माय हैंड but something on the screen also i want to showcase wow sir has already sir can you allow me to share now yeah yes you know you can share sir 
no sir it says uh, okay now yeah. i can share. he has just stopped sharing now you can share sir yes sir sharing sharing this was a uh, one of my summit that was based purely on technology only aapki amanat ek mere pe rakhi hui thi wo maine share kar di sir so nice sir so nice of you that is in really 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 kind of you sir so i'm going to share this uh, i hope you are able to see my screen right yes now. sir very much sir very much this is my another presentation if if ever you need a part 2 this also has all the technological uh, advancements there are even roads that can charge your cars while on the move norway definitely. has developed we will definitely can... have another session with you sir <laughs> so nice of you sir Focus you real one itself. Here is the real one. I think you are able to see my screen. Yes, yes, sir. We can see. And this handle is a telescopic handle. This can even go to any height you want. Okay. This is one of them on my behind on the poster as well. And here is the second one. this is a tiny portable one yeah this was shown earlier yes and what we have done is we have developed a robo cart as well that you can put up a small chair on the robo board you can sit and ride it and then we have done one for specially able as well people who cannot walk even if by birth what we do is we make them sit in them the control comes in their hand and we recently did it for two individuals their legs were crippled they couldn't even walk by birth and now they are known as man on wheels wonderful thank you thank you munish ji thank you so much and what i can say is simply superb these are the two words which fit you the most and uh, this is also evident from the appreciation messages which you can see in the chat window and uh, i am really very glad to see the way you connected with the audience you were so clear in your thoughts and in your talk that people connected with you so easily and how beautifully your presentation was designed means heads of the user and uh, the way you interacted the way you answered all the queries of all the participants whatever queries were put in the chat window you answered all the queries so patiently so nice of you sir thank you so much and uh, one thing i would like to say that we would like to see further possibilities of uh, establishing an ai lab at sharda university with your collaboration sir surely sir that I that privilege of mine and i am I'm, i'm already like i hold dr vishal already in high, very high regards you can say that if, if dr vishal says munish you have to do this i 24x7 i am there then this, this is, is like like his, his wish is like a command for me and we have already developed ai labs in so many schools and universities even i'm looking after the atal incubation mission by the government of india and indian school of business and we have center of excellence uh, with uh, so many universities and colleges and we are already looking after this technical incubation labs and uh, technical incubation centers in iit roopad iit indore so whatever you want consider it done sir Without sharda it, university will be the next in your list sir consider it done so sharda sharda will be the next in your list sir done sir we we might we <laughs> might and uh, provide couple of hover boards and make sharda university first university in the world on hover boards thank you so much sir you are so generous you are so kind thank you so much for your kind words and uh, thank you may i now request dr vishal to say a few words and uh, present the summary of this fdp yeah thank you arun sir i am audible sir. yeah welcome okay a very good evening to all of you on behalf of sharda university i dr vishal jain take this opportunity to extend word of thanks to all the speakers and the invited guests for gracing 
one week faculty development program with the presence online and offline second one week online the international faculty development program on recent advances in computer science and allied domains rexet 2020 during 23rd to 28th november 2020 is being organized at school of engineering and technology sharda university india the aim at of this fdp is to sharpening the teaching and research skills of potentials new and the seasoned teachers researchers and the trainers the inaugural session was graced by professor parmanand sir dean school of engineering and technology sharda university and professor nitin sir head department of computer science and engineering sharda university on 23rd november 2020 i thank them for their kindness and continuous support during this training program we conducted seven sessions of 2 hours each in one week thank you very much to all the resource persons the objective of the fdp was to develop research acumen among faculty members and also dissemination of the same amongst the scholars students by incorporating research based inputs in the education during the program we had more than 130 participants in all the sessions from various premier institutes of the india and the abroad thank you very much to all the participants for having their interest in the program for a summary on 23rd we started the program with a session on how to start with data science and implementation of end to end machine learning projects with deployment by mr krish naik on the second day we had a session on demonstrating iot edge analytics of real time monitoring by dr hardik goel from university of houston on the day 3 we had two sessions one is on scientific research for journals by ms kamya khatta from springer second session was on nature inspired algorithms for optimization and computational intelligence and introduction by zinshi yang sir from middlesex university uk on the day 4th we had a session on face mask detection using deep learning tensorflow by mr ravi kant yagi founding member of brain mentors on the day 5 we had a session on data generation using modeling and simulation for machine learning and hands on practice on pyrakit by professor p s rana sir from thapar institute and on the last day day 6 we had a session on artificial intelligence by dr manish chandra hope all the participants have enjoyed the fdp if any participant would like to share their experience they can unmute yourself or write in the chat window the participants can also switch on their video now so that we can have a group photograph before ending the session i would like to give my sincere thanks to professor parmanand sir professor nitin rakesh sir for giving us the opportunity to conduct this fdp i would be wrong at my part if i do not mention the names of my organizing team members dr arun prakash agarwal dr ankur choudhary dr gaurav raj and mr abhishek singh verma who worked so hard for last two months to conduct this fdp i would like to thank admin and the media to schedule these programs lastly a huge thanks to the fdp team faculty coordinators staff volunteers and the participants for they are having continuous support and the cooperation to conduct this event successfully at the end i would like to thank each and every one of you all the participants are requested to on your screen to take a group photograph and our team member dr gaurav raj will take a group photograph so now i request to all the members to please on your screen and i have shared a feedback link in the chat window so all participants are requested to fill the feedback link by today 6 pm and we will generate the certificate according to your given details and we will send the your certificates by next 2 3 days at your given email id uh, vishal sir munish ji ko unmute karne ki permission please de denge yes 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 i am doing yeah. sir munish ji there is a very famous saying it all is well if end is well and i can definitely say that end was very very good got us you were our in kind you were of our last speaker of this fdp and the session went so well that i can definitely say that we will have uh, means participants will keep always keep asking for you whenever we are going to hold an any fdp 
सर इनकी एक ब्यूटी मैं बोलना चाहूंगा जी जी दिस इज द टीम मेंबर्स ऑफ फोर मेंबर्स मिस्टर गौरव डॉक्टर नैन्सी डॉक्टर मनी चिंदल जिनको मैं कभी भी एक मैसेज करने की देर होती है मुझे दैट आई हैव शेड्यूल्ड योर सेशन ऑन दिस एंड दिस डेट एंड द टाइम वहां से रिप्लाई ये नहीं आता कि सर कोई और डेट बता दो या कोई और टाइम बता दो उस टाइम पे ये सारे मेरे लिए अवेलेबल होते हैं तो स्पेशल थैंक्स टू मिस्टर गौरव फ्रॉम इंडिया मेंटर एंड ही इज अ वेरी नाइस पर्सन उनको भी किसी दिन मैं शारदा यूनिवर्सिटी में इनवाइट करेंगे है ना मनीष सर वंस वंस दिस पेंडेमिक इज ओवर वी विल कॉल द होल टीम एंड वी विल बी हैप्पी टू ऑनर देम यस एंड दे आर डूइंग वेरी वंडरफुल एक्टिविटीज फॉर सोशल डेवलपमेंट आल्सो sir we are always available our unconditional support is with you thank you dr vishal and vishal ji as i said earlier i will again say your wish is our command up you Aray, say sir. and consider sir, what sir. whatever time even today we had chitkara program yes, you know i, I, know. I asked my I team know. that now you take care of the entire program i have been asked by dr vishal i'm going there so yes. we are always there and in the real world also whatever support we can go do for sharda university we are we are there with you we so have a nice virtual incubator as well in delhi we have our office in delhi model town so dr nancy is also here with me and whatever we can do mr gaurav arora is like an elder brother not uh, and for all of you and for your entire audience who ever are listening we could be of any use to you please we say take the maximum juice out of us we are available 24x7 i can see selva ra sir and i hold him in high regards he from he's from institute of engineers from trichy chapter and i recently did a lecture for them on ai high regards for him as well sir and so so, so few of the familiar faces rest all of you if i can say and he he also saw me in one of the programs same like this and then he reached out to me uh, that dr jindal can you do one of the lectures on ai for our chapter i said most welcome sir so if uh, for any of you i can do any time anything i'm available 24 by there is a participant dr kamal would like to share some experience now you can unmute yourself doctor good evening all good evening, good evening sir mr vishal good evening, i hope uh, i hope you are get, getting my voice yes yes yeah, you definitely are you are audible sir uh, yes sir uh, sir i just want to say i will just take a two minutes i believe i am having a two minutes to speak yeah definitely yes. sir you can go ahead sure sir Th- thank you thank you thank you very much first of all uh, i just want to say that i am a, you know i i was just having a chat with dr vishal and i was just saying that i'm following dr vishal although we are you know working into a parallelly work he is also an associate there with sharda i am also associate with uh, amiti and i can see you know uh, he is a he does a lot of these activity every time you know morning when i when i wake up in the morning i can see lot of messages are getting pop up whether with a facebook or a linkedin or a whatsapp he i don't know boy what time he sleeps although you know that's a one a feedback for a, a particularly dr vishal uh, apart from dr vishal the session was a great you know uh, i i i don't have any words to say i have learned a lot whatever the time we are having because you know i am also working there and uh, we are having 24 by 7 all the session has went very well i just want to say that i'll be happily if i have been you know getting these kinds of uh, informative session from sharda university also would like to say uh, thank you to mr dr munish jindal for a very informative you know session i am i am holding a next week session with the uh, stanford university i am a part of it and i will just want to give an invitation to each and every one for that i will i would be a speaker there and i'll be talking about ai only and frankly speaking i have gathered a lot of things from this uh, the, the presentation so with this i want to thank you uh, to each and every one uh, to you sir also dr arun agarwal and if i miss any name i am very sorry for that but it was a great and overly thank you very much thank you so much for your kind more, words please, sir yeah there are arun three sir, more, there are three key yes, party, three key organizing you. members and uh, dr ankur choudhury is there but uh, his uh, brother uh, got operated today for some hernia kind of problem so he is in hospital today so he could not join the whole session earlier he was with us in the beginning of the session and uh, dr gaurav raj is there and mr abhishek singh verma is also there 
uh, but somehow he is not i can't see him on the screen might yes. be he is busy somewhere and uh, i don't know whether you uh, know or not but uh, me dr rampur and dr gaurav were also there at amity university in noida for yes, seven and a half years yes. last seven and yes, a half yes sir i know asset <laughs> asset you were there i am into yeah. amity school of insurance banking actuarial science yeah okay, okay. so, okay. so i am into there, uh, management it domain and you were a, a pro, uh, in the cs department yeah thank you yes, so sir. much sir thank you so much thank for you. your kind words Arun, and sir, thank you dr are... munishi Thank Arun you. sir, there are two other participants who would like to share the experience. Yeah, most I have welcome. unmute them. I have unmute them. Yeah, one by one. Sir, good evening. Uh, good evening, to everyone. Really, it's a wonderful session, sir. The FDP was very much useful to all of us. Really, right from the day one, uh, we enjoyed all your all the sessions. The ended by our Dr. Munish Jindal is a great session. Uh, we enjoyed. Thank you, sir, for the excellent organizing. Thank you, Arun sir, and to all the organizers, the Arun sir, Dr. Arun sir, Dr. Vishal sir, and the entire team. You are very very thankful to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So good afternoon. I am uh, Dr. Kamal Karnatak. I think I am the odd man out here because I come from the industry. I am not uh, from the academic background. I am a group CIO for a company, and incidentally, I I also run. Uh, I am also a president of a non-profit organization called CIOs of India, where all the CIOs of uh, India are part of it. so we conduct lot of sessions for ai and other things when i got this mail i thought that since it is work from home nowadays so probably i can spare some time and uh, first day when i attended the first session i got so intrigued that i thought that let me find out time to attend all the sessions and i have uh, diligently attended all the sessions asked lot of question and after attending the session i went into the youtube and whatever the um, uh, video they have shared uh, of chris nayak and uh, brain mentor so i have gone through that so so it was really a good learning uh, from a from a industry perspective i would say and uh, i would also like to uh, thank all the speakers who came here i would also like to thank all the sharda university people who have done this fdp so it was a new experience for me to attend this kind of fdp but from an industry perspective i would say it's a mix of academic plus practical so thank you from uh, my side thank you thank you thank dr you kamal so your your uh, feedback matters a lot for us as because we always keep saying to all our speakers that uh, whenever they ask us that who is the audience then we always keep telling them that uh, we have research scholars we have amtech students we have faculties we have some software professionals also but we are actually not aware who is software professional who is not because whenever we get the registration form we just came to come to know that these are the software professionals but uh, do not remember them that this is like you that you are the actually software professional so thank you so much for coming up sir and your feedback really matters a lot and you are not odd man out sir <laughs> don't don't say like this that you are the odd man out So there is one more participants, Dr. Mahesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am Dr. Mahesh uh, from Chennai. Uh, actually, for the past, you know, 15 years in academia teaching, I have attended quite a lot of FDPs and I organized a couple of FDPs myself. I think uh, Sharda University's FDP is one such a kind, and I really appreciate uh, uh, the organizing team and who are is involved in taking this uh, uh, this pandemic and taking this to a next level. I think you are you guys have created a benchmark of how a FDP should be. I think uh, if at all any other FDP is going to happen in future, I think people need to uh, beat uh, uh, Sharda University's FDP from now on. I think you have uh, created a excellent benchmark, and I really appreciate that all the sessions were excellent. But I I I wasn't able to attend couple due to the cyclone here. so uh, i wasn't able to get a proper mobile signal and as well as the power fluctuation was there in couple of days and i also mailed uh, dr vishal with regard to that and uh, probably uh, if i can get the videos or uh, uh, recording of those sessions then that will be great for me yeah, uh, excellent, definitely be... excellent organizing uh, uh, team and hats off to you all people Yeah, thank, thank you, you doctor thank you doctor mahesh and uh, as i told you earlier also that all our sessions were live on youtube so we will definitely share exclusively with you that all the links youtube links so that you can uh, watch them later on also
Thank there you. is Namaste. one more request. There is one more request uh, from Dr. Swarnen Nindu. I have unmuted him. Yeah, thank you. Are you there, Dr. Swarnen Nindu? I think he has left. So now we can uh, wind up the session, sir. Nothing is pending at our end, I think. Yeah, thank you all the participants. Thank you once again. And uh, let me tell you one more thing that this was our second FDP in this year only. Well, first version of this FDP was organized in the month of June, 8th to 12th June. And uh, then we decided we were motivated by our Dean, Dr. Parmananji, to kindly hold another version of this FDP. And uh, getting motivated by that, we conducted this second version and now we will come up with the third version of this FDP in the month of June again and uh, as Mahesh ji already said that uh, we keep setting benchmarks so we will try to break our own benchmark and we will try to achieve new heights in the FDP in that FDP and uh, would like to see you again in that FDP and all those who are interested in uh, or uh, in the habit of writing research papers. So let me tell you that uh, we are coming up with an IEEE conference in the month of February. So we will share the call for paper with all of you. So do, those who are working in the research domain, we can uh, submit their work in that conference and uh, most welcome you once again. And I have shared a WhatsApp group link if you would like to connect with us for uh, getting the information of upcoming events at Sharda University, you can connect at our, our WhatsApp group. That is the name that exit. Archana ma'am, how are you? Just now, just now, I just am uh, unmute you. Yes. Thank Good you. Good afternoon, madam. Sir. Good afternoon, Arun sir. You Thank two you. are my classmate. You are my classmate <laughs> <laughs> in MTech. I am really yeah. very happy to see you there. Uh, we had uh, such a long uh, uh, week spent with us, na? And uh, yeah. I think you, uh, I, I was, uh, you were not able to see me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was attending all your sessions. They were really very informative sessions, and uh, such a uh, nice FDP you have organized. I really appreciate you, people. Thank you, Thank madam. You Thank so you much, so much. Thank you. And, I'd uh, like to attend for your further FDPs also. Most welcome, ma'am. Most welcome. Yeah. Hope Thank all the you, participants. Everyone. Hope all the participants have filled the feedback form. Please fill the feedback form, or you can copy this link at your place and submit the feedback form. By today, 6 p.m., we will prepare the certificate accordingly and will send you at your given email ID by the next two three days. And in case of any discrepancy in your certificate, you can connect with Dr. Gaurav Raj. You can see his face on the screen right now that uh, because he's the person who is looking after all this certification. So, yeah. Dr. Gaurav, would you like to say something on this aspect? Dr. Gaurav, you can unmute yourself. I think he's not able to unmute himself. So my just uh, uh, simple request to all the participants that kindly fill your name and organization correctly because the certificate will be issued in that name and organization name only. Thank With you. This, we take a leave and we'll meet you very soon in the next version of this FTP. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Uh, Ankur, sir, is sir, available? No, sir. He is not there in the meeting.